Okay, so we've had the Razorblade 14 for a few days now. We've already released our unboxing and first impressions. I have to be honest, although it's expensive, I'm really impressed with this new little laptop. Now, I've been a big fan of the Razorblade 14 and I've been using them daily as a daily beta. But my biggest problem with the old Razorblade 14 with its maximum 16 gigabytes of RAM, meaning that I couldn't really use it for my full on video editing, VMs and daily heavy workflow. So with this new model, we finally got upgradable RAM. So in tonight's video, I am gonna be upgrading this laptop to a fast 64 gigabyte, 5,600 megahertz RAM kit. And whilst I'm at it, I'm gonna take the one terabyte SSD out of here and put in a fast four terabyte SN850X SSD, providing it fits. Now this is a relatively simple operation to install these new components, but you will also need a couple of little extras as well. Firstly, make sure you've got a decent toolkit. I'm using the iFixit Essentials Electronics Toolkit because it isn't overly expensive, it's a really good quality toolkit, and it's got everything I need for my day-to-day -day work on these laptops. And because there's only one SSD bay in this laptop, I'm gonna need an external USB-C M.2 enclosure so that I can put my SN850 in this little bay, clone it before I install it into the laptop. Now before we start even opening up the laptop to install the SSD or the actual RAM, we need to do that cloning. So first things first, take your external enclosure, and we're gonna pop in our SN850X in the enclosure. This subnet is tool free as well, which makes it really easy, that's that quick to install it into this little bay. Now I will put all the links for all these products in the description below, just in case you wanna buy any of the equipment that I'm using here. But now that we've got this SN850 into the enclosure, we're gonna plug it into the laptop and we need to go to the Western Digital's website. We're gonna download the free copy of a Cronus True Image for these Western Digital SSDs. Now again, I'm gonna put the link for that software in the description just in case you buy the same Western Digital drives that I'm using. So install and then open the Acronis software. And we're gonna choose the disk clone option. Now this is very straightforward, you follow the prompts. First you're gonna choose your source drive, which is obviously your C drive in this laptop. You click the next and then it asks you for your destination drive, which is your SN850X. Now ignore the fact that my SN850X has some files on here. I actually cloned this twice, just making of this video. Yours will have nothing on this drive if you bought it fresh. Once you have chosen your source, chosen your destination, you need to tell it that this is gonna be a replacement drive and a bootable OS, and then click on the next and proceed. You're just cloning the operating system and the files that are on your C drive, just to the new SN850X in this caddy. Now, once that is finished, you shut down the laptop. We're gonna remove the SN850X from this actual caddy itself. We're gonna close our laptop up, now what I like to do is I usually use a mouse mat on my desk. I'll turn the laptop upside down onto that mat because I don't like to scratch or damage the top of the laptop. From there, we're gonna use the T5 driver and we're gonna remove the eight screws on the base plate. Now the base plate itself, once all the screws are out, does come off relatively easy, but there are a few clips around the hinge area. So what I like to do is slightly lift the base at the front. I'll usually hook my finger around the vent and just push it forward before lifting that base plate off. It's very easy to do, but don't just yank it off once you've taken the screws out because you could damage those clips. Now we're inside the laptop. The first thing we need to do is unplug the battery so we're not gonna do any damage. This is relatively straightforward. There is a sticker over it, which unfortunately we'll have to remove. And once you've done that, use your spudger or pry tool and there's tabs either side edge of the battery connector, which helps you loosen that connector. Don't just yank the wire to pull it out you could damage that battery wire. Now once the battery plug is removed, we can start changing the components. The first thing I'm gonna do is change the RAM. Now you will notice there's some mylar or some plastic over the top of these RAM chips. This is just on with some very light adhesive. You can just pull that straight off, put it to the side because you're gonna use it again afterwards once you've finished. We're gonna then unlock the retention clips either side of each of these RAM modules and those RAM modules will spring up, allowing you to pull them straight out and put them to the side. We're now gonna take our Fury RAM sticks and we're gonna put them in at a 45 degree angle so it sits into the actual connector. Once it's seated home, we're gonna push that RAM stick down towards the motherboard until you hear those metal retention clips click into place. It's a nice satisfying thunk when it goes in. Do that for both the RAM chips. Those are now installed. We're gonna stick on the bit of mylar back on the top 
over those RAM sticks just to give it that bit of extra protection. Now that's the RAM installed, we're going to move to the SSD. Now first things first, I'm going to remove the existing one terabyte. You'll notice the screw that's holding it in has a little sticker on it. Don't worry about that, it doesn't actually void the warranty by like, using that sticker, but obviously they will know that you've removed that SSD, so if you do any damage then that is on you, so make sure you're being very careful. We're going to unscrew that screw, and again the SSD will slightly pop up, we're going to then slide it out of that M.2 connector. Now what you will notice is there are a few chips at the base of the motherboard underneath this SSD, so we do need to be a bit careful. You don't want your SSD to touch any of those components. And what they basically installed with the drive that comes with it is a couple little foam pads because it is a single-sided SSD in this motherboard. But the SN850X we are using is a double-sided SSD. Now there's not a lot of chips on the back, but it's enough to stop it seating nicely when you screw it down. It actually bends the SSD if you leave those foam pads in place. You could do that, but that's going to put a bit of undue stress on that SSD, which I didn't like. So I removed those two foam pads and I've kept them safe in case I do ever want to put them back in again. They are just stuck to the motherboard. And I've used a just a very thin half a millimeter thermal pad on top of the chip so there's no way the SSD and the motherboard comes into contact. Now the SSD sits in beautifully in place in this connector. You just use the original screw to screw it back down and that SSD is installed. We now have to make sure to plug the battery back in slide the base plate on and screw in those eight torque screws and we're good to fire it up. So firing this laptop back up, the great news is but there's no mucking around with configuration or anything, it literally loads exactly where you left it when you cloned that drive. We're straight in with our nice new four terabyte SSD. We can show you straight away in Windows Explorer, although it's a four terabyte drive, what's formatted you're talking about 3.6 terabytes, that's plenty of space for me. There are eight terabyte drives out there, but they are prohibitively expensive at the moment, so this four terabyte I think is enough. And you can also see if we look in Task Manager that we've got our 64 gigabytes of 5,600 megahertz RAM showing, so that's working perfectly. So what I'm gonna do quickly now is I'm gonna benchmark both the RAM and the SSD so we can see that these are working perfectly and as expected. So to start with, for the RAM, I've run ADA64 on the original 16 gigabyte kit that I had with this laptop, and then with this Fury kit, installed afterwards. Now, although they're both 5,600 megahertz RAM kits, the actual Fury runs at much tighter timings than the original kit that Razer provided. Now this leads to some much better write speeds and copy speeds within this ADA64 benchmark. So not only have we increased the capacity of the RAM in this laptop to something that I'm finally happy with, but we've also got slightly faster RAM at the same time. And the good thing is this 64 gigabyte RAM kit isn't actually that expensive. And then onto the SSD, I completed a few runs of Crystal Disk Mark, both on the original one terabyte Samsung SSD that I had with this laptop, and then with this new Western Digital SN850X 4 terabytes. And as we can see, this is one of the fastest drives on the market, as well as having that four terabyte capacity. We're getting much faster writes with this drive, because the Samsung wasn't a slow drive, but the writes were only topping out about 5,000. With this SN850X, I'm getting over 6,600 megabytes a second. It's a really, really, decent speed and the best I think that we're going to get out of these Gen 4 drives. So there we go, everything is working perfectly. I finally got a Razer Blade 14 that I'm tr truly happy with. This can now run my daily tasks of heavy 4K video editing and running m multiple VMs that I like to do on a daily basis that the 16 gigabyte just couldn't do. Now yes, this laptop is incredibly expensive as we talked about in the first impressions, but this for me is an absolute game changer. And if you're looking at a workstation, maybe one of the higher end XPS 15s or 17s or a ThinkPad, for something in a compact pack like this with the power this has got, you'll be talking well over 3,000 pounds. So for me, this turns out to be pretty good value. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any question, put it in the comment section down below. And as always, I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching.